My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,405 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to go over a couple of new features in Paris, which I thought were pretty awesome, and I'd like to thank ServiceNow um, for implementing these things, because a couple of them... Uh, appear to be related to some of the videos I've done in the past so I'm not sure if the people from ServiceNow are watching Aspen now but if they are um, just like to shout out to them and say hey man thanks for putting these things in there it'll save me a lot of work in the future and I'm sure the customers especially the ones that I've dealt with in the past they'll be very happy to see that you implemented these things um, on that note people ask me um, I don't know a while ago you know, like, what's your objective with this channel? And I said, you know, I think one day there's going to be one Aspen Now solution in every stack globally. And it looks like today you're going to see at least two um, that made it as core features now in the platform. So the first one here uh, is insert and stay for storage. Now, you'll probably recall in the past, did a little video here in November 2018 on how to add insert and stay to the story form in London. Well, now it's a reality in Paris, kids. And you'll see right here, this feature has been added to the story form in Paris. Uh, so we're good to go. I don't know why three people gave it a thumbs down. I mean, ServiceNow, a company with a market cap of 85 billion is saying yes on that. So I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, but now it's a feature. And how does it look in the platform? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So uh, we're going to go to RM underscore story. That's our table name, or we can go to stories underneath agile development. And right here, when we go in the hamburger menu, you're going to see us insert and stay. And it'll make a copy of that. You'll see the number change and it'll go up to, I don't know, 68. Um, I was doing some, some testing of this and uh, yeah, it looks pretty clean. Brings everything through. Um, I think there are maybe some properties or something where you can set the fields or something like that, but I really haven't done a lot of research on this, uh, the out-of-the-box one um, that they're releasing in Paris, but pretty awesome that they've done this. Um, and then what we'll see here, um, you know, everything just came through. And then the second one, which kind of seems the same, but it's not as the copy story UI action. So one thing we'll notice with the first one that we did that we don't have any tasks. There were tasks in the first one, I believe. Um, but if we want to get capture the task, we'll go find a story that has um, tasks also. So as you can see here, um, I was baking a couple in the oven, so to speak, before this video. Um, and if I go down here, because uh, you, know, you can see right here, copy a copy, right? So obviously I did this a couple of times. Um, I'm gonna click on copy story. And what that's going to do is, it's gonna bring all of our tasks over in addition to copying the story. We'll note here, it runs this little business rule. We have a little link here. Um, so we can go back to the original one. Um, and then yeah, voila, down here are our scrum tasks. Um, these related lists are taking a little bit to load. My apologies, uh, Florida just had a hurricane come by and uh, maybe it's impacted performance today. So next feature, is converting your story into an epic. So if we go to our stories here, um, we'll see a story here at 65. Scroll down, we have this convert into epic. I'll click on that. And then it'll create an epic for us here. So it'll say, um, business rule will come out and say, okay, it's been converted to an epic. Um, then one thing we'll note here is that it adds the story in the related list. So um, that way you don't have to do it. Can't, looks like it cancels out the story right here. Um, pretty nifty feature. Also we'll have here in the work notes, converter from story and the number there. So hey, not, not a bad job. It's a pretty cool feature. And I feel like those three right there, um, those are pretty awesome because I know as a developer um, or even a PM, you know, if we're talking about the business side of the house, they use uh, this agile development pretty frequently. So if you're using like ITBM, um, chances are you're using the stories there to get out the work to your developers and everything. So this will make um, getting those stories out a lot faster um, and hopefully it'll make it faster for your developers too. So, so also in Flow Designer, um, there's this duplicate action 
feature for subflows, um, and also actions. So actions are like, uh, you know, this timer here that's set, and we're going to notice that we have this little copy page um, icon right here to duplicate the action. So when we click on it, um, we'll see that it creates another one right below it. And then, you know, you can do your drag and drop thing um, if you want to bring it down. Just make sure that, uh, you know, I don't know, it's kind of funky or I don't know, maybe it's just my, my performance is kind of slow on my computer, but always make sure that like orange dot, I guess, kind of forms. Yeah, see that? Right, I think I lost it even. But there'll be like an orange dot that forms um, at certain points there. In order yeah, there we go. Yeah, sorry, my my computer's running rather slow today. So they have that for actions and for subflows. Most typically, you're probably gonna use it for tasks is what I'm thinking. Um, you'll see it inserts another one right there. And then yeah, if I need to move this puppy down a notch. Yeah, there we go, orange ball forms, let go. Hold your breath for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. It's getting there. It'll do it. Yes, there we go. So that it finally moved it. Um, <clears throat> next one is going to be set an SMS in Flow, Flow Designer. So this is pretty cool too. Um, not sure how many of you guys are using uh, SMS out there, but basically, you know, when you, when you create an action, I already created one here. And I mean, if we do it from scratch, we'll just go ahead and click the plus sign. We'll do our action. We'll find send SMS down here and then you know depending on which record we want to take it from like if it's the trigger record which I don't know maybe most commonly is going to be you know you can bring over um, your assigned to as your recipient and then if you want to you know like bring over the group to um, you know if that's going to be one of your recipients on this thing too um, and just keep bringing them over until your um, your requirement is met right Okay, so pop that in there. We can hit um, done, and then we're good to go. And then save the uh, uh, the form here. Also, one thing with Flow Designer is pretty cool is that um, they came out with like roles for your for your flows. And, you know, you can check those at your own leisure. I didn't want to get too too down the rabbit hole um, with Flow Designer and that stuff, um, mainly because it, it it's kind of slow when I'm doing the recording and stuff. So, but there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Then there was add, oh, I'm sorry for this, I meant to do it in presenter view. That way it looks really professional. Um, then there was another one I did a video on, I think it was like in September, on adding self-registration to the service portal. Um, here's the video. Um, you probably recall this one. Uh, yeah, it's September 2019, so almost a year ago. And, you know, again, thanks for making this a reality because... Um, this took a while to, to make this happen. I felt like, you know, if I have this issue, you're probably having the issue too, where your, your customers are asking for this stuff and now they made it happen. So how do you make this thing, um, uh, doable in the actual platform? Well, we're going to go to plugins. We're going to find this external self, external user self-registration plugin. We'll note that it's free. I've already installed it cause I didn't want to waste a lot of time. And then after that, um, we're going to see that uh, in our service portals here. So we're, then we're going to go to portals. We're going to pick a portal. And then we're going to notice inside the service portal record right here, this external user registration configuration. Now, there's nothing in here. I haven't configured it yet, but I just wanted to show you that this would come up. It'll probably be blank. So then when you click new, you're going to see a couple of things in here, like the roles that you're going to give someone automatically. Um, to the provision users, you name it. Um, you know, if you want to do terms and conditions, the captcha thing. So this is really cool. You don't have, I don't know why I have two save buttons. Uh, like we're not even gonna go <laughs> go there. I don't, I don't know why this is showing to you. This is probably something I did by accident. But anyway, um, hey, who can figure this out, right? Like maybe I'll put that out there. Like put in the response box, like in the comments box, like why you think these two save buttons are showing. Um, if you're still watching this anyway um, so yeah you'll go ahead and take care of all this do the configuration uh, you can go take a look at the service now docs to go and see like the complete um, stairway to heaven process um, for doing this stuff but I just wanted to note the feature right so then um, you ever wonder or does management ever come back to you as a developer and say like well we want to know which widgets are on which pages well, my friends, that has been enabled too. 
So how do we make this happen? Well, first off, we're going to go to our scheduled jobs or more specifically our scheduled script executions, which are within the scheduled jobs. I made a favorite for it because if you go to scheduled jobs, it's, it's technically different. Um, and then like the script executions, because there's like a you know, different table form, whatever. Um, you're going to go to portal analyzer, right? You're going to notice it's on demand. So you're going to have to um, you know, hit execute now and they got all this QT script in here. I'm not going to go into the, the details, but we can go ahead and execute this thing. Um, it'll run real quick. And then here is the output, right? So they tell you to go to this list and the instructions like this SP underscore portal analyzer, make it a favorite or better yet, make it a module that maybe only your admins can see. Um, if you want to help, uh, help your team out there instead of having to memorize this list name, but yeah, you'll see here uh, the page, the widget. I, I threw in a lot of stuff that like out of the box, the table was kind of plain. So I threw in a lot of extra stuff. And then what I would refer to as the core four that you should always have in your list, uh, which is created, created by, updated, updated by, just to, you know, um, kind of keep tabs on what's happened, you know, latest or what the latest and greatest is, right? Looks like our page ID is a sys ID. And then it kind of tells you like the between statuses, right? Like if we want, we're gonna say, okay, which ones are out of the box versus customized. And uh, remember from that last video I did, like on the eight reporting features that people forget about, like let's say we wanna do a quick pie chart because management wants to know like how many are customized and how many are out of the box. Well, you know, you can go ahead and do that. And then you can go ahead and uh, ship that thing off to the powers that wanna know. So it looks like, oh, cloned is an option here. I didn't even see that. And then we have new. So um, pretty cool stuff. So just to review today's segment, like, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say there were five new features? I much? No, there were actually seven. Uh, and sorry, I should put this in presenter view just to make it look professional. Um, so what do we go over today, kids? Insert and stay on the story form. Then copy store in the story form. Convert into epic epic on the story form then we had two flow designer things right one to duplicate our action or subflow and then send an sms and then we had our add uh, user self-registration to the service portal and lastly analyze widgets on pages uh, within the service portal if you thought this video was informative and you learned something new go ahead and click like um, and if you're new to the channel you're um, uh, more than welcome to subscribe my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Out Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.